Many people think of Greece as a very, very ancient country. But the modern country of Greece did not come together until 1821, or it began to come together in 1821, and those were the first days of the revolution against the Ottomans to bring freedom to the Greeks. Even though originally they were the founders of democracy, they were enslaved for a number of years. And so the 200 year anniversary of their freedom is an exciting event. The Byzantine Empire comes to its end at around the 15th century. After that, Greek culture in general disappears from the scene of the world. It is not lost, of course. It continues to live within the Ottoman Empire. However, the world is forgetting modern Greeks. So when the revolution against the Ottoman Empire comes in 1821, uh, the world is amazed because uh, everybody thought that the Greeks went extinct. It was just one other ancient culture. For the Greek people, it's important because it is the time that they got their freedom. Just the way America fought a revolution, Greece did the same thing. So for the Greeks, to be able to freely speak Greek, to practice their religion, to do all of these things and not do it in hiding as they had to do for hundreds of years under the Ottomans was an amazing feat. We see waves of people coming to Greece just to fight for its independence because for them it was a miraculous event that the Greeks come back to history. That's what it means for us but also for the rest of the world, the coming back of Greece and that's what we are celebrating now. Greece was nothing. Greece did not exist at that point of time. Right, and they had to deal with an enormous Ottoman Empire. And it was a struggle that took nine years, but eventually they were able to establish a nation which was much smaller at that point than it is today. Nevertheless, it was Greece again after 500 years. That's, that's huge, that's huge. We are here today celebrating the 200 year anniversary of Greek independence. It was 100 years ago that this museum was actually formed. And then two years ago, we signed the Sister City Agreement between Tampa and Heraklion. All this has created the perfect intersection for really celebrating Greek culture. You know, it's such an interesting kind of intersection of anniversaries, and it's important, I think, to recognize um, the 200th anniversary and our 100th anniversary because Greek and Roman art truly anchored our collection. And here we are, you know, in 2021, and we continue to grow the Greek and Roman collection in interesting and thoughtful ways. I think it's always exciting to invite members of the community into the galleries to explore and find something to wonder about and something that they can relate to. One of my favorite things about the Antiquities Collection is that they are objects made by people, for use by people. So there is a history and a connection there that as people wander the galleries, they can spend time thinking about who made this and why, and what was its purpose? And it really is an opportunity to think about history and think about our place in history and our future and what we might leave behind with objects. Art, particularly antiquities, reveals to us not only who we are presently, but also by looking back at historical objects about who we were. We personally are not only the culmination and continuation of our own personal histories and stories, but actually of each other's histories and stories. I think it's really great that the museum is taking time to recognize the Greek Bicentennial and celebrate it with our community because as educators we are always looking for the role of relevance of our museum objects and the role of relevance in contemporary society. So we're really excited to be able to share this with our larger community. We have one of the largest antiquities collections in the southeastern United States, and there is something for everyone to find in our antiquities collection. The Tampa Museum of Art is a place where we preserve culture and heritage from all over the world. The 200th anniversary of Greek independence has a special place at the museum because we have such a wonderful antiquities collection that features beautiful ancient works of art that have survived the test of time, and like the Greeks, are still here to tell their stories today. 
The museum boasts a very interesting collection of uh, ancient Greek objects. Uh, I have been visiting it several times. Every time I focus on a different uh, object. Yesterday, when I was looking at the collection, I focused on a cantharos, as it's called. It's a cup with two faces. On the one side, there is a menad, a female form, and on the other side, a satyr, a male, let's say, mischievous form. It's interesting because it shows these uh, two divinities are followers of the god Dionysos, the god of wine and it shows a bit of the wild side of the ancient Greeks. I have always been interested in the material culture from ancient Greece and ancient Rome, but starting to work here at the museum and to learn more about the Greek objects that are from Sicily really kind of ignited my, my curiosity to learn more about that side of my family and my cultural heritage. And so I have some favorite objects in the collection that are particularly found in Sicily. So the one object that I specifically wanted to highlight was the Arethusa of Syracuse coin in our collection. And this is a really special coin. On one side it has Arethusa, who is a sea nymph. Essentially, a river god fell in love with her and she uh, fled to um, Ortigia, an island um, near Syracuse in Sicily. It alludes to that Greek myth as well as the Hellenic games in a Sicilian context. So on the other side of this coin um, is a chariot, as well as the goddess Nike with a wreath that she is presenting to the charioteers. So again, that is that reference to the Hellenic games. So one of the things that makes this coin extra special to me is not just that as an educator I get to talk about it and I get to talk about the larger context of this coin in ancient Greek history, but it's also really special because I think that the history of Sicily, especially where it's positioned in the Mediterranean, played a huge vital role in the ancient world. And so being able to talk about Sicily in a historical context as well as a personal context, it's really fantastic. People relate to objects. These are objects people used in the past. Um, they have a history. They have something to tell us and teach us. One of the more interesting of these objects that has a direct relationship to the Greek War of Independence is Hiram Powers' Greek slave. Um, we have a collections of objects related to this. And so in the 1840s, Hiram Powers was an American expat living in Florence, Italy. And while he was there, he was really heavily inspired by the imagery from classical Greece and Rome. And so looking to some of those white marble sculptures of Aphrodite and Venus, he created one of the most iconic sculptures of the time. So the Greek slave features a nude woman. Her hands are chained and in her right hand she holds a locket and a cross and while we are confronted with her nudity the figure itself looks demurely off to the left. Powers created several versions of this. Um, he created six full-size sculptures as well as multiple miniatures and busts. So in the Tampa Museum of Arts collection is one of those busts. It was created in 1849. In Powers' own words, the sculpture directly references the Greek War of Dependence. He said, the slave had been taken from the Greek islands by the Ottomans in the time of the Greek Revolution. She stands exposed to the gaze of the people she abhors and awaits her fate with intense anxiety, tempered indeed by the support of her reliance upon the goodness of God. Gather all of these afflictions together and add them to the fortitude and resignation of a Christian and no room will be left for shame. And so despite her nudity, she is cloaked in her faith and is an object that in the 1840s and 50s, when it was unveiled to an American audience, really had strong resonance with the political climate at the time. So in the 1850s, you have the US really debating the topic of slavery. And so this object of a Greek slave looking to a history about 50 years prior and the Greek war for independence and freedom of Greeks from slavery, you have the Americans really thinking about what that could mean in the US. So as we celebrate the Greek independence um, and the bicentennial, it's really exciting to have this object that can point us to the shared histories between the US and the Greek cultures, to think about what freedom means and how people fought for those freedoms. 
it's wonderful that you know we have a turnover and it's such a large collection that we can do different type of exhibits that are going to speak to the visitor the local person and everybody just who comes and walks through the doors I was immensely honored to be invited to join the board, particularly because of the Outstanding Antiquities Collection and because of my cultural heritage. It has also allowed me the opportunity to meet our new antiquities curator, Bronco Van Oppen, and I'm really looking forward to his continued programming um, through the Antiquities Collection and bringing those objects to, forward to today and how they're relevant to us today, um, which he does splendidly, so I'm really excited about that. My name is Branko van Oppen and I am curatorial consultant for ancient art at the Temple Museum of Art. At the moment my wife Clara and I still live in the Netherlands, but we are eager to move to Tampa. I am really excited to join the museum staff in person as soon as we are able to leave. As we celebrate the Greek bicentennial, I would like to take you back some two and a half thousand years when the Greeks also fought for their lives to defend their freedom. During the first half of the 5th century before the common era, some, though not all of the Greeks, joined together to rise up against the Persian Empire. While the Greeks were able to keep the Persians at bay, the Athenian Acropolis was raised. During the time of Pericles in the 440s and 30s, a new Parthenon was built under the supervision of the master artist Phidias to honor the city goddess Athena and to celebrate the city's myths and history with scenes of epic battles and ceremonial processions. This relief scene from the west frieze of the Parthenon on the Athenian Acropolis shows two horsemen from a longer cavalry procession of a class of citizens called Hippies, which literally means horsemen. This was the second highest Athenian property class. The reason why I am showing this relief is because, interestingly, the Temple Museum of Art has a beautiful vase with a nearly identical scene painted in red figure. The young man here wears a broad-brimmed hat called Petasos and a military cloak called Clavis, and he rides a galloping horse and also holds a lance. The other side of the vase displays a heavily draped woman carrying a torch, which may refer to the Panuchis, an all-night ceremony that was part of the Panathenaic Games. This festival included religious ceremonies and sports, as well as cultural events. Some competitions were open to all Greeks who wished to participate. Others were reserved for Athenian citizens only. The themes on this vase are thus an expression of civic pride, like the Parthenon itself. Over the course of history, the inhabitants of the Greek mainland and the islands have been subjected to the hegemony of Macedon, were incorporated into the Roman Empire as a province and then became the center of the Byzantine Empire. In 1453, Emperor Constantine XI addressed his officers and allies with a final speech echoing the fervor of Pericles' funerary oration of 429 before the Common Era. Greece would not regain its freedom and for the first time in history become a single unified state until its independence 200 years ago. Please consider visiting the Tampa Museum of Art to wander around the museum and to wonder about the Greek and other ancient art as well as the modern and contemporary works on display. Celebrate your Greek heritage and always feel connected in your own personal way with the objects. You go to the classroom and uh, okay, you turn on your projector and you show them an image of an ancient vase. But then you go over there and you have it in front of your eyes. I mean, that particular object, which you see in a distance of uh, 50 centimeters from you, that very object was created by someone uh, 2,500 years ago. I mean, this is an experience which cannot be replaced by anything. I'm very impressed with the artifacts that this museum has. I look at some of these, that pottery that is preserved the way it was then and thousands of years old. It's, it's mind-boggling how that can be. I wonder if one of my ancestors way back, way back, may have used something like that. Maybe that particular one? Especially after taking classes that look at the history of 
Greek antiquity and stuff like that, being able to see those kinds of artifacts and be able to trace lineage to that is just, for lack of a better word, it's, it's really awesome. It's super cool. And I think especially if you're Greek, I mean, it's important to go see like the origins of your culture and like know the history behind that. But I think for anybody who's not Greek, it's fascinating to see how far we've come and to see things that have been around longer than we would ever be. I am personally very happy that the Tampa Museum has one of the largest exhibits of Greek and Roman art because it shows how they value the Greek culture. The collection is, is one that everyone should see because it is worth seeing. The museum is a uh, jewel to the community and we should take care of it. We should. All around the world, people are celebrating the 200th anniversary of Greek independence. This event is especially important to Tampa because two years ago, Tampa officially became sister cities with the port city of Heraklion in Crete. As a part of the celebration, we even received some special messages from our friends in Heraklion and here at home. It feels like yesterday, but more than two years have already passed since as a proud deputy mayor, I was actively involved in the official procedure as a result of which Tampa and Heraklion became sister cities. I am not deputy mayor anymore as I'm now serving the community from a different political position. But surely, I am still extremely proud of that achievement. Tampa and Heraklion relationship was never meant to be a mere ceremony for cutting the ribbon or for posing for photographers. So many fields of cooperation are there that must duly be exploited with knowledge, seriousness, and responsible enthusiasm. Yes, I did visit Tampa Museum of Arts, yes, I have been impressed by its collections, including the antiquities. And yes, I definitely want to come back. On this occasion of great importance to Greece, it is one honor and a pleasure for me to send my warmest greetings to Mayor Jane Castor, to TMA Director Michael Tomor, to Consul General Dimitris Sparos, to the Paris family, and to all our brothers and sisters overseas. Together with the wishes for a prosperous future where our two cities may live as authentic siblings. And of course, you are all welcome to visit Heraklion and Crete. The Sister Cities concept was uh, established by President uh, Eisenhower after the Second World War to develop good relations b between countries because he had seen what war had, had wrought and, and thought that if they could establish some union that would enable people to communicate, it might help promote peace throughout the world. Mayor Lambrinos was the mayor of Iraklion. He's in his second term, I, I believe now. So he came to visit and to sign the formal documents of the Sister Cities Agreement. So, so we have a good relationship, uh, more than you would expect in some sort of formal setting. This is really kind of Αγαπητοί δήμαρχοι της Τάμπα, κυρία Τζέιν Κάστορ, αγαπητοί συμπατριώτες, με αληθινή χαρά απευθύνω αυτό το χαιρετισμό σε μια ιδιαίτερη χρονική περίοδο συμμετοχής της αδερφοποιημένης με το Ηράκλειο Τάμπα σε ένα κορυφαίο ιστορικό και πολιτιστικό γεγονός για την πατρίδα μας την επέτειο των 200 χρόνων από την Ελληνική Επανάσταση του 1821. Το γεγονό αυτό τιμάται επάξια στι Ηνωμένε Πολιτείε τη Αμερική στην Τάμπα, στο εκεί τοπικό μουσείο τη τέχνη. Η συμμετοχή του τη επιβεβαιώνει του παντοτινού δεσμού Ελλάδο και ΗΠΑ και την αταλάντευτη κοινή πίστη μα στι ύψε αξίε τη ελευθερία και τη δημοκρατία. Για τι αξίε αυτέ αγωνιστήκαμε και αυτέ θα καθορίζουν και το μέλλον μα. Θέλω να ευχαριστήσω θερμά όσου είχαν την πρωτοβουλία και όσου συνέβαλαν στην πραγματοποίηση των εκδηλώσεων για την επέτειο της ελληνικής ανεξαρτησίας. Ιδιαίτερα τη Δήμαρχο, τον Διευθυντή του Μουσείου κ. Τόμορ, την κυρία Έλενα Πάρας Κέτσουμ και τον κύριο Δημήτρη Σπάρο. Και να προσθέσω συνάμα ότι αναμένουμε το τέλος της δοκιμασίας που επέφερε η πανδημία για να συνεχίσουμε απρόσκοπτα τις δράσεις μας και τις επαφές των αδερφοποιημένων πόλεων μας του Ηρακλείου και της Τάμπα. 
υγεία και τις καλύτερες ευχές μου σε όλους σας. Tampa has a lot of other sister cities, but this is the first one with a Greek city, which was important to the Greek community. There are a lot of parallels between Tampa and Heraklion. They're a port city, we're a port city. They rely heavily on tourism. Tampa has a large tourism element to it. They have a wonderful museum. We have a wonderful museum. So it was a very natural fit to um, bring these two communities together. The history of Greek people is nothing short of legendary. In the U.S., an estimated 3 million American residents are of Greek descent. The Tampa Bay area has benefited greatly because of those immigrants and their descendants. Just two years ago, Tampa reaffirmed its close relationship with Greece by signing a sister city's charter with the city of Heraklion. Tampa and Heraklion are now linked together for all time. On a cultural level, the Tampa Museum of Art has long been a liaison between our two cultures. My Greek friends, please know that March 25th will always be a date of significance in Tampa. May our cities and people continue to cultivate close business and cultural ties. The people of Greece, especially Heraklion, will always have a second home here in Tampa. Freedom, self-determination, self-governance, you know, relevance of family and community, you know, all of those values are values that are found in other cities throughout the world, and there should be no reason that we're hesitant about reaching our hands across to one another and saying, you know, let's be friends. Let's understand what your culture is, what our culture is, and see where they meet and see where they differ so that we can learn from one another. I think as a younger person with Greek heritage, I think it's important to kind of still pass on a lot of the big cultural things, like dancing is a huge, a huge way that people still connect to that. And it's a really nice way to like, you wear the costumes and you feel like, you know, you do the dances, you listen to the music and like, it, it, you feel like you're back in Greece. Since ancient times, people have been dancing and we know that Greeks have been dancing for many years because in Homer's Iliad, there's a reference to a group of people dancing in a circle around the spear of Achilles. So that's a very important part of Greek culture and something we like to preserve in generations to come. We found that in historical books, the same dances that are still done today in parts of Greece were done in Homer's time. So that shows a thread and a chain of Greece, ancient Greece with modern Greece. So by teaching dance, for me, it's a way of passing along the stories of, of the Greeks and the Greek culture and how dance is such an important part of the culture and the community. The Kalamatiano is a dance that kind of represents the Greek culture because the Greeks are very hospitable, very sociable, very close to family and friends and their community. And if you've ever been to a Greek wedding, chances are somebody has tried to pull you out on the dance floor to dance the Kalamatiano. It comes from the region of Kalamata in Greece. Uh, but there are a lot of other dances. There are probably a good estimate would be about at least a thousand or, or more dances from, from Greece. Even though it's a small country, all the different villages have their own variations, their own steps. One other thing that's interesting about folk dance is that the costumes vary as well, depending on the region. And my costume that I'm wearing today is from the region of Thrace. Well, Greek dance is one of the most, um, I think, recognized and beloved sculptures in our collection. In case you have not had the opportunity to see it in person, it is a really beautiful sculpture, and it features a young woman with her arms extended. It's a nude figure, very typical of classical nudes, but there's a thin layer of fabric that is draped across her arms. It gives, I think, that sense of motion that she has her arms extended as she twirls around or moves around to the music with that piece of fabric just gracefully kind of dancing around with her. It's um, something that I think is so wonderful about Genoine, just these simple features that just shows the, the grace and elegance of his artistic practice. And of course, artists have always looked back to the past and looked to antiquity for inspiration in their works. 
So this is a wonderful opportunity to share that linked history, linked anniversary or celebration that we can share with our audience. It's certainly important for us to recognize the Greek community in our area. And you know, we couldn't have done the programming in our, especially in our antiquities collection without the support of the Greek community. The Greeks are a freedom loving people and their culture and their heritage has survived through a lot of persecution and a lot of difficult times, but they persevered and they persevered preserving their culture and their language and their dance and their overall traditions, which is an amazing feat for all those years where they were under Ottoman rule to be able to preserve that. Join a circle of Greeks dancing. Hold the hands that held the hands of heroes of the Second Battle of Marathon when Axis powers were stopped by ragged Greek bands, a stand that changed the course of World War II and history came full circle like the dance. Join a circle of Greeks dancing. Hold the hands that held the hands of Sulian women who one by one left the circle dancing off the mountain to deny the enemy's demands preferring death to surrender to the Ottomans and making true the freedom call, better one hour of freedom than 40 years of slavery in jail. Join a circle of Greeks dancing. Hold the hands that held the hands of martyrs who held aloft the light from Byzantium to the Western lands. The light first saved at ancient Marathon by the few who stood against the Asiatic hordes and in so doing a continent and a new world as well. Come join a circle of Greeks dancing and hold the hands that held the hands that held the hands of Homer. This poem by Dr. Louis Gaitanis was written in the mid-1980s and ties together the dance and the history of Greece from classical to modern and how the dance has played an important part and how he uses the dance as a symbol of Greeks connecting with one another in the circle of dance. I come from Tarpon Springs, Florida, and was enriched by the Greek folk culture there. My family has been there since uh, 1918. Tarpon Springs is very famous throughout the United States as being a, a hub of Greek uh, activity during the time of the sponge divers, that uh, many sponge divers, uh, especially from the island of Kalimnos and Sini and Halki, came to work in that area to harvest these sponges. This was over a hundred years ago, and it was because of them that the church was built and this community was built, and it has been sustained ever since. In Tampa Bay in general, it has a very, very large Greek American population. Here in Tarpa Springs, we also have a, a relationship with uh, cities in, in Greece. We have a relationship with the islands that actually the people came here from Greece. Tarpon Springs is very well known as a Greek community. At one time, it had the largest Greek population of Greek citizens in the United States. And of course, that city spread to other parts of the Tampa Bay area. And thousands of Greeks are living in this area now. Actually, I came here when I was very, very young, a 13-year-old little kid. Came here in Tarpon Springs. I grew up here, I developed here. Um, America gave me everything that I have and I'm very grateful. Also, I had the opportunity to serve this country, and I'm very proud of it. Um, the, uh, actually, the Greek-American community is a community that uh, it's very, very involved with the, uh, with the society. They're not just an isolated, peripheral, marginalized group that is unable to assimilate. Not at all. I mean, those people are professionals. They are lawyers. They are doctors. They are professors. They are whatever. I mean, they're fully integrated into the structure of the American society, but nevertheless, uh, they still have brought with them some of that memory. And that makes a difference, I think, because that's the beauty of America. The beauty of America is that a pluribus unum from many things, one. That's what we are. 
Art is very, very important. Art is a culture and culture is a civilization. So all these things are tied together. So you cannot have an identity unless you have culture, unless you have art. Tarpus Franks is very proud to preserve the, uh, the Greek culture and heritage that we have, but also the uh, Tampa Museum of Art, actually, it does the same thing, preserves the Greek culture by having all these Greek artifacts. It's important at all times to celebrate world cultures that are significantly different and the same. And I think taking a moment to just pause and ask ourselves the question and ask the world the question, why is it important to celebrate independence and democracy, is an opportunity to take a look at our collections that surround us within the artwork, the framework, that told many stories about independence and freedom. I'm very glad that the community here undertook that task to memorialize that momentous event that happened two centuries ago. I call it momentous because if you come to think about that, 400 years of a people being under the rule of a different nation, it's quite a challenge, okay? But nevertheless, those people managed to preserve their language, their culture, their identity, their memory. It's through these historical events that we really learn from one another and, and at the end of the day realize that we are one humanity, have shared beliefs and goals, and all that is worth celebrating together. It was, uh, let's say, a happy incident of history. The place of Greece, the location of Greece, in between the uh, ancient civilization of the Middle East, of Egypt, uh, put them in the perfect position in order to combine all these cultures and to come up with something new. And by thinking that, because they were a fiercely independent people, they started doubting religions or emperors or huge rulers in a way that led them to the idea of democracy, that every human has its own value. I think that is the greatest contribution of Greece to, to global culture. While this event is celebrating the Greek Bicentennial and we're really proud to be a part of that, the Tampa Museum of Art is for everyone and we want everyone to feel welcome here. We want everyone to come and explore and find something that ignites your passion or sparks your curiosity for learning and we welcome you all. To really understand each other is to not understand fully the full dance form or to understand fully every written work done by a Greek author, but to pick up little bits and pieces and say, you know, that's really interesting or that one thing speaks to me or I enjoyed watching that dance or hearing that poem. All these little things really spur within ourselves a recognition of you and I are the same. We are the same and we express ourselves through similar medium art, music, dance, the written word. That's really how we get to know each other. It's a shared experience with all of us.